Welcome to Learn Law Better. In this episode, I will provide you with a proven note-taking technique. This approach to note-taking was created over 50 years ago at Cornell University and is used by millions around the world. Hi, this is Bo Byers, and today I want to talk to you about how to take class notes using the Cornell method. While it is possible to use this method on a computer, the preferred method for taking class notes is by hand. Make sure to listen to my previous episode called Handwrite or Type Notes as to why handwriting will result in better results. The first step is to have the right paper. While you can search for Cornell paper and purchase it online, already pre-formatted, you can easily format any paper, whether it's lined or blank, with a ruler and pen. Assuming you are formatting it yourself, Go two inches from the left side and draw a line from top to bottom, dividing the paper into two columns. You will then take your notes in the much larger right column and leave the left column alone during class time. At the bottom, draw a horizontal line two inches from the bottom, which you will also leave blank during class. During class, you will place all your notes in the right column. Do not try to outline your notes during class. Instead, Focus on the content of the discussion. Now, if there is material that is sequential in nature, then yes, number it. But don't try to place the material into a larger organizational system during class. For example, suppose that you are creating an outline for your torts class and you have negligence under Roman numeral two. That's fine, but don't worry about that during class time. So if your professor says there are five elements to negligence, then by all means, write down one through five along with the elements. Next, don't take verbatim notes. Instead, capture the most important ideas. Since these are your notes, write telegraphically. You've likely seen movies where somebody in the movie received a telegram. Because people paid by the individual letter in those days, telegrams sounded choppy, yet they were completely understandable you can employ the same technique and avoid words like a, an, the, for. Also, use abbreviations. In law school, many students use a capital K for contract, a capital P for plaintiff, a Greek D or delta for defendant. They're your notes, so create abbreviations that work for you. Now, shortly after class, you will use the left side column, which is called the Q column, C-U-E, because those are your cues for helping you understand what is in your notes. You should write down keywords in the Q column that correlate to your notes in the right column. For example, suppose your class discussion was about mutual assent for a contract. In the Q column, you might write down offer in one spot, and then further down, you might write acceptance. One advantage of using keywords is that you can find those keywords on any of the pages where they appear in your notes, allowing you to tie concepts together, even though they might have been discussed at different points during the class discussion or even over several classes. Finally, the blank section at the bottom of the page is a summary section. After you complete the Q section, summarize your notes in the summary section. That is critically important because each time that you engage with the material, you learn it at a deeper level much more so than will occur if you only reread your notes. Make sure to come back for my next episode where I cover the content you should be capturing in your notes. Please leave a comment below on your thoughts on this episode, and don't forget to hit the share button to help me create the Premier Law School Success Channel on YouTube. We have many other episodes, so feel free to explore. Also at learnlawbetter.com, you will find more free resources to help you succeed, including our newsletter, blog post, and exam bank. Thank you for watching.